Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. I'm happy. I'm excited. I am so Oh my goodness, I, I, I literally could bust, I, I could literally bust. I woke up at three o'clock in this morning, I'm looking at the clock, it's not time to get up yet. Because I am excited because this weekend, we will be tailgating at FedEx Field. I'm not happy about being at FedEx Field, but I am happy about being around so many Dallas Cowboy fans because we always take that mother humper over and we gonna be eating. This is gonna be the finish of the season, regular season here, blowout, I've got eight pork shoulders i'm gonna start smoking today for 18 hours i don't know i might even go 20. I, I, it might it might it might because that's a lot of meat i got about 60 pounds of pork to smoke i got my buddy david wiley coming over to get started on making the potato salad and and the baked beans and everything i've got to go over and pick up the tickets because you guys are joining us for our tailgate party. And let me say, let me say to you guys, cause see, I've had a lot of people, you know, there, there's so many forms of communications these days, okay? There's Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and and, and threads and, and email and text messages and stuff. Listen, you don't have to have a ticket to come to my tailgate, okay? We always bring enough food cause when you come, you come there hungry, you go out fed. What we do, we don't charge, you don't have to have a ticket, we don't provide alcohol, but we will have the big subs, we'll have the chicken wings, we'll have all that stuff, we'll be cooking and everything, and, and you know, till about 2.30, 3 o'clock, we're going to stop cooking because we got to take everything down before we go into the stadium. If you want to join us, please, by all means, come by. All we ask, man, make a little donation, you know, it costs you about $9 for a hot dog inside you know to help us to cover the cost of the food because like i said we got a lot of food here that we're going to be cooking and stuff and we're going to be up there we're going to be cheering we're going to have a great time my man e2 blue is going to be there michael anthony my beautiful bride my, my my daughters will be there we know thomas garrett is coming pamela savage is coming i don't know if rio will show up this year or not i mean the way his team has played he might not even show their skins fan all day he's you know Skin fans always come over to eat because, you know, they're just about homeless, okay? I, the, the franchise is broke down and busted and all that, you know, and we, we try and help them out. We try and help them out. But hopefully the Cowboys come in here, they end up getting a big victory. We go home full, and we get ready for the playoffs. I was getting ready this morning, and I came across something that was really, really interesting to me. And it just literally blew my mind. And this is where it changed my, my which direction I was going. You know, um, I'm not ESPN. People will say, well, you could never be ESPN. I know I can't, okay? I don't have, you know, thousands of people working for me and, and uh, hundreds, I mean, excuse me, millions of dollars in production crews and staff writers and people that work. The You've seen me have to move the camera right here to adjust it, okay? I'm the sound guy. I'm the video guy. I'm the writer. I'm the talent. Well, not I don't have any talent. But, you know, I'm the, the person in, in front of the camera. I'm the person behind the camera. I'm all of it. So, I, of course, I can't be ESPN. I can't be. So, you know, it's all good. But I was sitting here going through, and I was looking, and I, I came across this, and this just literally blew my mind. I want to show you Trey Lance, because Trey Lance was trending on Twitter today. And this is a play of Trey Lance. I, I want you to watch this play, because this is phenomenal. See, let's go. Let's go. Kansas City, Tennessee, and Cincinnati. Look at this. Trey Lance. Bam. 47 yard pass to Debo Samuels. Well, that, that beautiful play. Beautiful play. Oh my God. Look at it. Bootleg. Bootleg. Debo. He's open. Okay. That was amazing. But you know what? If you read the tweet on here, this was actually posted January 2nd, okay, 
On this day in 2022, Trey Lance and Debo Samuels connected on a 45-yard TD pass. Trey Lance started in the, the injured Jimmy Garoppolo, and it was first NFL win. His first NFL win. Are you kidding me? Many thought he was the future of the team. He would be traded before the 2023 season. The thing, I, the reason I bring this up is because we had so many people that were like, you know, Derek, you know, Derek, you know, you were literally texted me and said, oh, now, finally, we got ourselves a quarterback now. We can get rid of that Dak trash cot. That's what you that's what you said to me. Now we have a real quarterback in Trey Lance. Trey Lance got his first win two years ago. And he spent uh, almost a whole year on our roster. We were literally ready to say a guy who just got his first win, not of some of y'all, would be better than what we got with Dak Prescott. I'll even go another step further because, you know, Skip Bayless, who claims to be the biggest Dallas Cowboy fan there is, early part of the season was saying, I just don't trust Dak Prescott and think Cooper Rush is the answer. And this is what he said in the offseason, though. But let, let's just, I just want to I just want to go back there because see, the Internet never forgets. Dak Prescott is better than Cooper Rush. But I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Cooper Rush would have won that game yesterday because Cooper Rush is exactly what I needed yesterday. I needed a quarterback who could handle the offense and make just a couple of big throws at the perfect time, just the way he clutched up against Cincinnati and up at the Giants on Monday Night Football. I just needed a couple of throws. He has a little better command to efficiently and consistently run the offense than Dak. I'm not saying he's better because Dak will go on flashes during the year where you say, oh, that's a top two or three offense, yeah, right? Yeah. And he's a t edge of the top ten quarterback. Well, I can't make that case on Cooper Rush, but you watch. Somebody's going to pay Cooper Rush and make him their starting quarterback. He will not be a Dallas Cowboy, and unfortunately going forward, Dak Prescott will be. Dak Prescott. Unfortunately, Dak Prescott will be the starting quarterback, unfortunately. Hmm. Skip, 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 skip Bayless. And he wasn't the only one. Remember, of course, Joey Taylor, who always, this is where it's so crazy because you always hear them say that regular season doesn't really matter. It's what you do in the playoffs. But we hear about Lamar Jackson is the MVP who's done absolutely nothing in the playoffs and usually is injured before the playoffs, but be that as it may. It's kind of crazy, and I'm just curious for those out there who said that the Dallas Cowboys need to start Cooper Rush. They need to start Trey Lance. Are you looking at this differently right now since he's leading the NFL in touchdown passes and um, is one of the fewest intercepted quarterbacks in the NFL? I'm, I'm asking this for a friend because Dak has been everything that you want and then some this year. And let's say, let, let's be clear here, because the Cowboys have not been what they used to be. You know, when, when Skip Bayless said, you know, that this was you know, what, what we needed. When Cooper Rush, Cooper Rush ran the offense like Dak Prescott did in 2016. When we had a great running attack, because it was the running game that took over last year with Cooper Rush and the defense stepping up. Because we only scored like 21 points on average with Cooper Rush versus 29 with Dak. But be that as it may, running the football is still key. When Mike McCarthy says, I want to run the football, this is my worry. This is my worry that says, over the course of the last three games, this is what we've done as far as running the football. Buffalo... Well, let, let me go back to Philadelphia. Philadelphia was a route. We had 138. You love that. Against Buffalo, it was 89. We get blown out. Miami Dolphins, it was close to that 100 mark, 97. Against the Lions, we find a way to win. It's only 61. You need to be able to run the football. So, I mean, clearly, clearly, the offense is Dak Prescott. And the problem has been with us against the San Francisco 49ers. 
it's been basically the same. We're rushing 60 yards or less in those games. And we become one-dimensional. Now, of course, maybe things are a little bit different because of the way C.D. Lamb has taken it to a whole nother level where he just seems to be unstoppable. You know, maybe it's going to be better with Jake Ferguson, who's a better weapon. Maybe it helps to have Brandon Cooks. But you still need to get that running game going. And that's the thing that I worry about is so much right now is getting the running game going. Although... I have said many, many, many times that the Dallas Cowboys of 2023 season is being built or is built and has the parallels of the Green Bay Packers of 2010. The thing is, people think of football like it's fantasy football or that it's Madden. In fact, let me let me pull up a statistics real quick. This just hit me. I want to look at Aaron Rodgers' stats individually. I have have the Green Bay Packer ones. Um, career stats. Okay. Here's what's crazy. In. Uh, 2010, this is what I've always said. Aaron Rodgers, 28 TDs, 11 interceptions, a 101 passer rating, right? They win the Super Bowl. The next year, he has 45 TDs, 6 interceptions, a 122 rating. They don't win the Super Bowl. The next year, he's got 39 TDs. Eight interceptions, a 108 rating. Don't win the Super Bowl. I'll give you 2014. 38 TDs, five interceptions, a 112 rating. Don't win the Super Bowl. 2016, 40 TDs, seven interceptions, a 104 rating. Don't win the Super Bowl. 2020, league MVP, 48 TDs, five interceptions, 121 rating. Don't win the Super Bowl. 2021, 37 TDs, four interceptions, a 111 rating. You don't win the Super Bowl. You have to go back to where he had 28 TDs, 11 interceptions, and a 101 rating to see Aaron Rodgers win the Super Bowl. It's not the guy that's always up here having the phenomenal numbers that wins the Super Bowl, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Aaron Rodgers got better than where he was in 2010, but could not get back to the Super Bowl. But back to the 2010 Green Bay Packers. The thing that's crazy about that team is, and I say it's parallel, is their leading rusher only had 730 yards. Aaron Rodgers, again, 28 TDs, 11 interceptions. Good season, but not the Aaron Rodgers we've known all along. Running the football, they were 20th in the NFL running the football. They weren't great. In the playoffs, um, their wild card game against the Eagles, 138 yards. Second game against the Falcons, 96. Uh, The NFC Championship game, they were able to run 120. But in the Super Bowl against the Steelers, it's only 50 yards. So maybe, maybe with Mike McCarthy and this offense and the way it's built in this defense, maybe running the ball is not going to be as important this year as it has been in the past mainly because we have more than one weapon than C.D. Lamb, because we have now Brandon Cooks, and we have um, Jake Ferguson, and you've got role players, and Michael Gallup, and and Jalen Tolbert. Maybe this group, because that's another parallel that Mike McCarthy had. He had Greg Jennings and Donald Drivers and Jordy Nelson. He had a lot of receivers that he could go to, and he would mix the ball up between all of them to be successful. So maybe, just maybe, I'm I'm overreacting about the running game, 
but I feel like this is what we need to do. Let's listen in because I think Squagoo has the same thing about it, uh, what I say about running the football, as we get ready to take on the left hand up, the Commanders. Cowboys can clinch the NFC East and the two seed by beating the Commanders. What are you watching What is for? it that Foxy does? <laughs> I love the fact that they signed Lyle Collins. Bring some more beef and a big body in there. They need to get this going, man, because this is th – think about this. Dak has been playing at this level without the complimentary run game. Now, if they can get this going, that is when you start having a conversation about Dallas and potentially getting to the NFC Championship and playing San Francisco. I'm going to tell you right now, your offense helps you more than your defense when you play the 49ers, as we saw with the Baltimore Ravens. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to put points on the board. And if you allow them to make you one-dimensional and let those pass rushers get after Dak, it ain't going to turn out how it turned out against the uh, Detroit Lions or anybody else. Okay, so I'm going to upset you now. Okay. But it's not me doing it. It's Fink. It's our coordinating producer, John, stick it in your pipe, Fink. Because all week long, I have set up every Cowboys conversation by talking about them as the two seed, by talking about them at home, by talking about can they finally make this run. Mm -hmm. And Fink said, Greeny, you're talking about them like they've already beaten Washington on Sunday. This is the game they blow. <laughs> this is the game they lose. Look, we know it. We've seen it happen in the last decade. They always mm. lose this game. They cannot lose. They were handed a gift. They were given a present yeah. by the Eagles last weekend. Is there... There's no way they blow this game Sunday, is there? <laughs> if they do, G, yeah. I ain't coming back to work. <laughs> Amen. Here's the thing, man. In division, you, you both of you guys know this. Sometimes the records don't, yeah. don't signal how tough and difficult these games are. That's why you see it all the time, teams losing. You see Cleveland beat Baltimore when yeah. we know Baltimore is better. You see Pittsburgh beat Baltimore. Like, these are the games where Dallas needs to establish, mm -hmm. all right, we, we, we in the playoffs, but let's not relax. And two, they need some momentum going into these playoffs, especially with what I just talked about with that run game. Well, if they blow this game, I'm going, I'm going to put a sign outside of the facility because I only live five minutes from out there yeah. and tell them you sick now. <laughs> <laughs> if the difference between winning and losing this game is the difference between being the two seed yeah. and having every game until the championship game in your building or being the five seed and, let's face it, having no chance whatsoever. Tannenbaum's got one other reason why this might be a little scarier game than you think. Yeah, and, and we've been there before. Ron Rivera, presumptively, this is his last game, and he is beloved and mm -hmm. well respected by everybody in the NFL and his Except own players. The team. And I know Graz will say that they haven't done so so far, but this is their last stand, and I'm sure they're going to want to play hard yeah. for their coach, who's probably going to be out on Monday. And again, I think Dallas should win. Clearly, they're the better team. But Greeny, like whatever Washington has, my expectation is they'll leave it on the field on Sunday. Yeah, uh, but you're right, though. Like, why haven't they been doing that for the last month, the way the Chicago Bears have, for example, trying to save their coach's job? Washington feels like they've been fairly checked out. Now, it may, you know, maybe they gather it maybe because it's the Cowboys. Hey, let's, let's, let's yeah. mess up the Cowboys postseason. I, I just haven't seen it from this Washington group in a very long time. And frankly, if the Cowboys don't win the game, Oh, One God. thing I know for sure yeah. is that the Eagles won't win their game either because no one ever repeats as champion of the <laughs> NFC East. We didn't get to talk about this on Tuesday. 19 years. I knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 19 was years. Coming. He talked about it before. Weird stuff season. happens. The refs have to mess up the end of the Cowboy game. <laughs> the Eagles have to blow a lead against the Cardinals. Weird, Weird stuff, stuff always happens. happens. Right. I'm telling you. It right. took them 10 minutes and 4 seconds to get it in today. <laughs> so what you're telling us is that if the Cowboys somehow manage to lose this game, then the Eagles will lose to the Everybody Giants. stop. Everybody stop. I know yeah. that for Everybody sure. stop. And then I know the Cowboys Let's won't win it next year. They okay. are not losing the damn Yeah, I don't think they're going to okay. lose the game. Let's, Let's ask a serious question. we got to stop saying that. They're, because they should win. And Mike okay. said it. I mean, they're the better team. They should yeah. win. If, they, if they're going to do any of the things that we expect them to have a shot to finally do this year, you got to take care of business 100%. on the road. Is this that we've seen the disappointments so many times, so many years in a row. No one agonizes it with it more than you do. Why is it different? What, what, what feels different about this year and this you team? win this game, it's your best chance to at least get to the NFC Championship. Right. Because you're at home. The second thing is your quarterback is playing at a higher level than he's ever played. And two, we've seen Dallas play at elite levels at times during this season. And if they could just sustain that. And here's what the playoffs are about. Speaking from a guy that didn't re win many of these games, mm -hmm. but listening to dudes that won Super Bowls, it's a three-hour window, mm -hmm. right? It's a three-hour window of 
a little of, of being a really good team, having a little bit of luck, and playmakers making plays. That is why we think San Francisco is the favorites, because when you look at the team, they littered with the Jimmys and Joes. And usually in the playoffs, that's what it boils down to. But Dallas got some Jimmys and Joes yeah. now. Yeah. And I, I think that's the key to them getting to the NFC Championship and having a chance. Yes, yeah, so I agree. They have a couple of things. They could score. They have the best quarterback in the NFC, in my opinion, yep. and they could rush the passer. Yep. But their Achilles heel is their run defense, and if they score enough points, they can mask it up. The road thing is interesting, too, but their last road game in Miami, they did not win it, but they, they were not run out of the building like right. they were in you know Arizona right. and San Francisco. So they have a little bit maybe a little bit something like momentum in terms yeah. of that. All right, we are just getting rolling today. It is a special weekend coming up today. All right, there you have it, good people. Cowboys versus Commanders. It's not the hate that it used to be when I grew up, the rivalry. But this game, make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. This game is the most important Dallas-Washington game since I guess I'd say the RG3 game. This game could set the Cowboys up for an opportunity to have a deep run in the playoffs, or it could set it in motion where it is a short, short run. Although I will say, we did lose to the Commanders last year and then destroyed a Tampa Bay team the next week. So who knows? Who the heck knows? All I know is it's time for me to get to work. I got a lot to do here getting ready for game day. My home team, my loyalty, I'm at Uptown Royalty. We fight for all DC, who are we? I speak facts, facts. I'm not making riddles. The hogs open big old holes for John Riggle. Chantel is on the team. And you knew that he was smashing. Daryl Green is on the team. And you know nobody faster. Thought you was gonna score, but I knew that he would catch up. And Doug Williams was the first black quarterback to win the big dance. Got three rings, went in the big dance. When you got Joe Gibbs, you got a good chance. Let me tell you something about some good fans. Back in the day, RFK was our palace. If you don't know, you need to ask about us. Think we gonna lose? Well, I can't believe your doubters had a whole crowd screaming out. We want Dallas! No, you don't. No, you don't. Trust me, you don't. I'll see you soon.